you know, culture is such a, a, a challenging, uh, you know, concept for many organizations. Because often, you know, culture is really the unwritten expression of an organization acting out its core, its core beliefs. Whether or not they've even articulated those core beliefs or not, many of them haven't. But it's what I'd like to say is how things are done around here. Okay. Because that's the reality. How are things done around here? That's what really your culture is. And I often go into organizations and ask them, what do you celebrate? Tell me what you celebrate. Because whatever it is that you celebrate is really what you value. And so when you hear them talk about, we celebrate milestones with, with employees. If they've met their 20 years, we recognize them, we do these things, whatever. Then they truly are serious about their commitment to their workforce. But if you see on the wall, you know, a lot of framed dollars that represent their first, you know, million dollar mark and then their, you know, $20 million mark. And those are dollars that are framed on the wall. It just says something different. It's not a bad thing necessarily, depending mm-hmm. on what the nature of the organization is. But my point is it, it tells you what they celebrate is what they value. Right. Those values then manifest themselves as, as culture. We um, are a product of the merger of a lot of different organizations. We've, you know, we acquire groups that merge with us and then, then we have to mer- merge them culturally. Correct. So <laughs> it's, you have to be very deliberate about that. And what's interesting is that uh, the way that process works is that you, um, you have to create a shared, a shared purpose and future for these people who have not heretofore been working together. Correct. So you, ha- the way you do that, there's a number of ways to do it, but <clears throat> um you have to convene them in settings in order to get that done. And, you know, we merged in uh, in Wichita, for example, and in January, we started operations here in Wichita. And in April, the pandemic hit. Mm, Suddenly, yeah. we had had one meeting with the new people that were coming on board, one meeting. And then suddenly we were prohibited by law of gathering with people greater than six. Right. So we were kind of hands tied behind our backs, literally, as to how we how we could affect that, and so it was a great challenge for a year. And we did, and we did have some issues that we knew and that we would predict. But that uh, we, uh, I, I can pl- proudly say today that we have a culture improvement plan that manifests itself as a uh, in, as an employee engagement program, right, right, and that we do every year, and that has got as much detail in it as our strategic plan has and is as closely monitored and executed as our strategic plan is because you never stop, you never stop managing culture. It's not going to be what you want it to be unless you're intentional. Correct. And you, you know, the strategy should dictate, should dictate the kind of culture that you need to be effective in achieving that future state and then prescribe to you what and how you should begin about, go about developing that. Our, our um, culture is really one of, about three things. First, it's about safety. There has to be a culture of safety in an organization. And I'm not talking about workplace hazard safety. I'm talking about safety in which any employee knows that they can put anything of issue on the table and can it can be discussed openly without collateral damage and without risk of retaliation. If you don't have an environment of safety, then what you won't have is you won't, you'll never have this, um, you know, this sense where people will engage and and learn and this is the key part of this we have so many organizations talk about their mistakes they should great organizations talk about their mistakes because it's only when you talk about mistakes can you get better and can you prevent them from reoccurring you have to have safety to be able to talk about mistakes because people will not put it out there if they think there's a fear that they're going to be exposing themselves or a member of their team and so we have systems by which we do this in a in an enterprise way and make it safe. It's so it's safety, and then it is learning because you can't. If without safety, you won't be able to talk about those things. And then, lastly, it's engagement. We really are seeking engagement among all of our associates, our physicians, our employees, our you know partners, etc. And uh, we find that those prerequisites are necessary to really gain to get engagement. And so, engagement is sort of this holy grail that everybody's trying to reach. And companies that report higher levels of engagement have better business results. Because their people care about right. the work that they do, and so and they take greater efforts. I can give you an example. We had a have a we have a physician assistant who's excellent. We have a lot of excellent, talented, advanced practice providers. This physician assistant detected that on a patient of hers that this he was very anxious about this surgery that skin cancer that mm-hmm. she had diagnosed and that he was going to be enduring. And on a day that she had taken off, she goes. 
picks him up and brings him to the office to, for his surgery, spends wow. the entire day with him in the, in, in the surgeon and it was with his family take, you know, taking him home. And that's engagement. Wow. Wow. <laughs> And there, I could give you other examples of like that too, but uh, those are the kinds of things that culturally you have to make, you have to create an environment that's conducive to enabling that to happen. 